Hey, 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 we are live with the one, the only Jason Paul. <laughs> How are you doing, bud? I'm good, Cammie. How are you? Um, I'm great. Um, it's been a really interesting year, hasn't it now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think interesting is a good way to put it. Uh, yeah. And, and if you're talking about the last 12 months, yes. If you're talking about 2021, I think it also still applies. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I think 2021 was like basically 12 months already, right? <laughs> yeah, I feel, yeah, it feels like we're in our fourth February or something. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. So I am so glad that you are here and that we can kind of have this conversation today. I'm looking forward to it because you've been up to a lot of amazing things. I have always been watching what you're up to, um, and and I and I love it. So tell us a little bit about what you've been up to for the last twelve months, and sort of what you're what you're working on right now. Sure, there's I mean there's probably three primary things from a work perspective I've been up to. I'm the, I'm the senior influence strategist at Cornette, which is a full service uh, ad agency based in Lexington, Kentucky. But we work with you know businesses and brands that are national and global in scope. So we have a really nice client base. And so I develop influence strategies, social media strategies, digital strategies for the clients there. And that keeps me plenty busy. But uh, I have that, you know, workaholic passion bug about what I do. So when I go home, I start working on two other primary things. I've got a new book out called Winfluence Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand, uh, which is a new look at influencer marketing, which we can get into if you want. Um, and then to support <laughs> that uh, and to just, you know, feed my uh, curiosity more than anything else about the influencer marketing space. I started an influencer marketing podcast also called Winfluence. And yeah. so I'm rolling out about three episodes of that a week where I talk to people in the industry and just learn more stuff and get smarter about it all. Yeah. I love that about you. You've always been such, you really are an entrepreneur. I know you're, you're, you're working in a company right now, which is awesome, but you have always had that entrepreneurial mindset, which I really appreciate um, always coming out and like looking at the market, talking to people, just being open to them. So, um, we go back a good ways, um, mm -hmm. maybe a decade at least. Um, oh, at least, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I remember when you first kind of started breaking out on the scene, if you want to call it that, um, with the blog, <laughs> it was a long time ago. Can you guys remember when blogs were the way you broke out on the scene? Yeah, crazy. Anyway, uh, crazy times. And so um, you've always done that, though. Any Anytime any something new comes up, you're in it. And you've always been really great about working with brands. So you brands are kind of your thing, I think, you know, as far as building and growing a corporate brand, um, mm -hmm. but also a personal brand, which I think uh, that's why I wanted to bring you on here, because you have like that breadth of experience, you know, from the top of the of the chain all the way down to like the individual part. So today um, we're in for a real treat because you have been thinking about influence and that's the whole Winfluence model. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have a little banner here for you. You've got an audio book. So in a little bit, I'll run a banner and let people know what how to get that because you've got a really amazing deal for us today. Yeah. Um, but could you talk a little bit about how that came to be? Why Winfluence? Why did you choose that? And um, kind of what are you thinking about with that? So the the whole idea came, there were two things that were happening at the same time a couple of years ago when this book, you know, sort of came in my brain. And one of them was I was working on some influence marketing stuff for my clients at Cornette that I thought was like, you know, bleeding edge. We were doing stuff that other people weren't doing. We were mixing influencers into our content. We were thinking about influencers in terms of not just online influencers, but who else can influence the audience. Mm -hmm. So we weren't limiting our thinking to Instagram and YouTube, which I think a lot of people do when they think of in influencers. Mm -hmm. So we were thinking about it a different way. So that was happening. And then at the same time, there just began this onslaught, this stockpile of mainstream media coverage mm -hmm. of influencers that was really negative. And it was saying, these people are superficial. They're, you know, the peace sign duck lips is all they do. And, um, and there's just really no, no reason for businesses to use them. They were talking about the people who were Photoshopping clouds into their Instagram pictures and faking their lifestyles and all this kind of stuff. And I know that to be, you know, maybe five, 10, 15% of what's out there in the influencer space, because the other 85 to 90% is what I work with on a day-to-day -day basis, which are online content creators who have, you know, rabid followings who listen to their hang on their every word and can definitely be persuaded to try and buy products when when an influencer works with brand. 
so those two things kind of collided. And I said, we've got to start rethinking influencer marketing because businesses are hearing what the mainstream media say it says about it and they're not giving it a shot and they're missing an opportunity for a very effective and efficient way to use their marketing dollars. So that was kind of the core idea of just reframing how we think about it. So they um, were basically, and I, I see this too, I see this all the time. They were discounting the value of working with influencers mm -hmm. Um, because they didn't understand that there was more to the concept than just finding somebody with a lot of Instagram followers and paying them, you know, $2,000 for a post or something. Yeah. Not only that, but like there's a, there's a documentary on HBO right now called fake famous where Nick built a former New York times yeah. technology writer basically took three people, actually really one person because two of them smelled the BS and kind of backed out along the way. But he, he took this one young lady and basically she had like 1100 total followers on Instagram when he took, when he started this project, this experiment. And she wound up having over a quarter of a million by the time he bought all these fake bot followers for her. But but his experiment was, can we make a fake influencer so fake, so famous that brands want to work with her? And of course it worked because eventually she got a lot of followers and brands that didn't know any better or didn't have good agencies or didn't have good thought process behind what they were doing were like, oh, she's got a quarter of a million followers. Let's mm -hmm. you know, send her some free product. So of course it worked, but his his you know, intimation in this documentary was mm -hmm. that's how all influencers work. And that's <laughs> how this very little tiny sliver of the influencer audience work. Not every influencer out there is living their best life, taking pictures of themselves on private jets and they're going to Bali every other well, weekend. Well, the private jets are fake too, by yeah. the way. And, yeah. and in the documentary, they show how you fake it. You know, they have yeah. they have the window with the toilet seat. Yes. You know that they hold up and yes. they do a close up shot so you can't see the edge of the toilet seat. That's yeah. how you that's how you do the private jet, you know, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy because um I do feel like um that is possible. So it is something that at, if you are working with influencers, you kind of have to know what you're doing. Like you have to know who you're talking to, what you're doing. But also if you want to be an influencer, I think that may be another way to look at this too is that um, you can do the short wins, but the, in the end of the day, the brand is not going to work with you continually if you don't bring results, correct? That's that's absolutely correct. And and we're getting, brands are getting more and more mature with it. And we've gotten mm -hmm. to the point now to where not only are they saying, not only are do I need you to share your analytics and your metrics, and we need to you know think about conversion goals and things like that, but brands are actually raising the bar and going to the influencer and saying, here's my marketing objective. You mm -hmm. tell me how you're going to accomplish that with your audience. And if the influencer doesn't come back with, you know, with that comes back with like, well, my fee is this and you have to pay me X for this number of posts. Mm -hmm. The brands are just like, yep, talk to the hand. See you later. I'm out because they want influencers that think of themselves kind of as as marketing agencies uh, to a degree and media mm -hmm. outlets where they say, OK, here's what you're trying to accomplish. Here's how I think I can accomplish that goal with my audience. Those are the influencers that brands are starting to respond more to. And so the superficial folks are, are going to eventually weed themselves out because they're not going to be effective. Well, I think that's really interesting what you just said, because I believe that too. I see them as, I mean, I hire a lot of influencers or have, um, I see them as contractors, mm -hmm. as a, a kind of content creators. I mean, you don't get to tell them exactly what to do. Cause just like if you hired a contractor, you can't tell them what the means and methods are that, that you expect from them, but you want to get a, a, a proposal from them mm -hmm. and work with them like that. And so that's why I don't really have trouble paying an influencer because it's just like you're paying them to work. Right. So. Yeah. I think, I think the way that I like to think of it is, is that for a small segment of the audience that I'm trying to reach, I'm hiring an individual creative director. And that individual creative director is in charge of coming up with whatever strategies and tactics they need to come up with to help me achieve the communications goal. The goal might be to uh, you know, get people to try or buy a product, but it might also be to get people to think differently about an issue or a topic or a brand. It might be to align a brand with a certain lifestyle, but that the challenge, the creative challenge I put forth on the influencer and say, okay, you tell me how you're going to do this. And if they come back to me with a plan that makes me think their audience is eventually going to change their mind about how they think about this. Those are the people I want to work with. No, that's really great. I, I love that you say that because one of the things I think that's interesting about that, that, the thing that you just said that I don't want people to miss is that if you, if you don't tell them how to do the creative, you're going to get better results because they know their audience and they can make much more relatable and authentic, if you want to call it that content. 
Correct. Yeah. And if you think about this, if anybody who's ever worked with or for an agency, mm -hmm. if you're the account planner or the uh, or the account director and you come to the creative director and say, I want you to build three billboards that say exactly this and whatnot. If you give them basically yeah. a production task rather than a creative challenge, they're going to look at like you like you've got three heads. So don't give a production task to an influencer. Go to them and say, you know how you're brilliant in your ability to create content and engage audience online. I trust that you're the one that I, I want to work with to do that for my business. So here's the creative challenge. Now you tell me how you're going to accomplish it from an execution perspective. Um, and again, that is going to streamline your process and make your uh, influencer marketing uh, programs much more effective and, and much more valuable to you long term. So is part of the creative challenge that you give also the result that you're trying to, to, to achieve or what are you looking for there? Yeah, I, I do. And and so I, I've broken it down a couple of different ways and, and I've only really kind of turned the corner on this myself and probably in the last six months to a year because it was mm -hmm. like, okay, here's the, here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people to think differently about this product. Tell me how much, you know, posts with you cost, because I think it's going to take three or four Instagram posts and about 10 or 12 stories and whatnot. So I've been going through the deliverable list of tactical things in my head. Only recently have I decided it's it's kind of like if you're in old, in old yeah. school media planning and buying, you don't mm -hmm. go to um, you know, a, a television network or iHeartRadio as a media buyer and say, I want this many commercials. You go to them and say, here's what I'm trying to accomplish. You tell me how many commercials I need. Right. And so I started to kind of turn my thinking a little bit and say, OK, I'm going to stop giving them a list of deliverables and then just asking mm -hmm. for a cost. And I'm going to start saying the deliverable is change the way your audience thinks about this company. You tell me what that looks like. And as, I've, as I've done that, I've started to see the, the, the really good influencers who understand their role really well from a strategy perspective come back to you with a plan. It's going to take what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate this message into a YouTube video every month. But then I'm also going to talk about it over here on Instagram and I'm going to naturally intertwine your product into my content in other things that almost seem organically because people are going to know I'm using the product. So it's going to be there anyway. And so those are the ones who I'm like, bingo, we're, we're good. And, and those are the ones that I'm not just going to use for a campaign. That's a three, four, five year relationship where we're I'm going to say relationship comes out of that, right? That comes, Absolutely. That, that's a relationship rather than a one and done kind of, yep. you know, do this for me and then here we go, right? So Absolutely. Um, I love that. So tell me, is I'm, I'm assuming all this goodness is, tell us about your book. Like, so what are we going to learn <laughs> if we read your book? So the the book is it, you are going to learn a bit of this in the book. The book has a lot of case studies in it of how people are doing uh, influence marketing really well. But the the core concept of the book that I think is is really going to come through for you is the reframing of influencer marketing is taking the R off the end of it. We need to stop focusing on influencers because that puts us in the mindset of YouTube and Instagram. And, and, and we're thinking about the channel. We're thinking about the people. What we need to think about is influence. That's what we're trying to accomplish, right? That's the verb. That's the goal. That's the action. So if you think about that way, if you look at your brand's challenge, your company's challenge, and you say, okay, how are we going to influence people to think this way, to buy this product, to try this product, et cetera? It might be that YouTube and Instagram is a great channel to do that. And you can find people who have influence on those channels. But if you're a local business and you sell to, uh, you know, basically parents, then the president of the local PTA might be your best influencer and they may not have an online following. True. Right. So now we're starting to think about, OK, political lobbyists and community leaders and, you know, lots of different ways to accomplish influencing that audience to take action. Um, and yes, the online influencers are going to be a big piece of that in a lot of, of cases, but in some cases they won't. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you on that. And I think it's really interesting because I like to think of things as a very holistic strategy. You know, I'm a very, I'm a strategist. So I like mm -hmm. to think in the strategy realm. So I love that you're saying that it's not about specific channels. It's about which channel is working the best for that particular influencer. And it doesn't always show up as like three Instagram posts in one video. Exactly. And I'll, I'll give you a really good example of how that kind of influence marketing as opposed to influencer marketing comes together. We did a, a thing at Cornette a couple of years ago, which was one of the impetus you know, ideas for writing this book, where University of Kentucky Healthcare, which is a hospital system, basically, yeah. um, they had a new campaign that was launching with a two minute film. Now, how many people really want to watch a two minute movie about a hospital? Not a whole lot. Right. 
Um, and we and Cornette did the film and it was really good. We, you know, basically we took their their uh, areas of care and we turned it into this kind of dramatic cinematic cinematographic, if that's a word, narrative. Yeah. And it's a really good film. So you, you get inspired by it and you think, oh, man, UK Healthcare, they they are a real good part of this community and they're there the, to be for us. You know, right. So it was good. Mm -hmm. But who's going to watch two minute uh, uh, movie about a, a hospital? So what we did is we we decided we were going to launch it on Facebook and we were going to use mm -hmm. influence marketing, not influence or marketing, influence marketing to help kind of hack the Facebook algorithm a little bit and get mm -hmm. a lot more organic views for it than it would normally get. So we took online influencers. We had 43 people who we know who were basically local online influencers, Instagrammers and bloggers and things like that, who had a good following online. And we engaged them and we paid them and we paid them a, a nominal fee. It wasn't a whole lot of money because we weren't asking them to create a lot of content. What we wanted them to do was when the video launched at 11 o'clock on a Tuesday, go to the video, like it, uh, comment on it, tell your UK healthcare story and share it with your networks. That's all we were asking them to do. So we didn't have to pay them a whole lot of money because it wasn't a whole lot of time. Um, and UK Healthcare is a big hospital system in, in central Kentucky. They were, everybody was really enthusiastic about doing it. So we had 43 of those people. But then we looked at offline influencers. Let's get the mayor involved. Let's get the CEO mm -hmm. of the Urban League involved. Let's get the music director at the local Presbyterian church who's involved in all the art scene involved. Because we know when people go and see that they are interacting with the content, now all of a sudden people will pay more attention to it. It's true. We had 75 offline influencers that were involved in this. And then to trumpet the brand, the UK healthcare team came back and said, well, the day before we're going to debut the film to our employees. There's about 20,000 UK employees. Now those are the ones who would watch the film. Right. So we're going to debut the film to them and we're going to tell them you are influencers too. You go and do the comment, like, and share on the film. Mm -hmm. Long and short of it is we had like, I think within six hours, we had 40,000 views of the video. Um, within the first 30 days, we had 800,000 views of the video. Mm -hmm. Lexington, Kentucky only has 320,000 people in it. So we were almost three X the population of watching this brand, this two minute brand film about right. a hospital because we didn't, right. we didn't limit our thinking to influencers. We looked at influence. Yeah, no, that's, that's just powerful. I mean, it's so powerful. I mean, we did some of that too. I've done some of this too, where you have like a, a group like, so with, when we did the roller coaster at SeaWorld, we had those um, roller coaster fans. Most of them back then were not really online. They just <laughs> showed up and they rode rides like yeah. constantly. So having like people that are, enthusiasts and I think employees kind of fall into that category too. They're enthusiasts about the brand because well heck they work there. So it makes sense for them to be enthusiastic about the brand. And then they share it with their family, their friends, their neighbors. They're like, hey look at this is where I work, you know, kind of stuff. I think that's amazing. And then mixing in those local celebrities, if you want to call them that, and yeah. politicians and people like that. And then on top of that, um having these influence or whoever they are to help you as well. I think that's just like that three part punch that you're doing there offline, online and um, internal, which is just, I, I think it's, it's really powerful. I, I'm so glad that you're sharing this, which you always do. You're such, such a great guy for sharing all of your strategies and ideas. It's um, great. We do have some fun people in the audience uh, heckling you. So just so you know, this year. I love and it. So I, is, uh, I guess I need to click heckling. that to see. Oh, yeah. Chip. Uh, Chip's always heckling me. Yeah, he's always here. <laughs> hey, Ben. Um, so he says that he devoured your book in one setting. So I really am excited about um, that, too. So I'm going to share right now while we're at it so that people that are here or watching even in re replay can grab this um, that Jason gave us is going to give us a cool banner. Hold on. Let me get my banner here. Wherever it went. Jeez. Come on, banner. Go. <laughs> Eventually it'll work. Just give me a second. But um, tell us about what you have here for us and I'll pull it up while you talk. Yeah. And, and it's actually the, the audio book publisher, um, Gildan Media, actually came out the other day and said, hey, we're going to do a promo for your audio book. Just FYI, we're going to give it give it away for five dollars a pop which is 75% off the regular mm -hmm. price. And they were like, you can share that with whomever you want to. So I'm sharing it with everybody. Cause I want, I just want people to go get the book. I don't really, you know, and if you can get a, get it for a better deal, then by all means go do it. Um, so yeah, the audio book is five bucks for a limited time. I think for the next week or so. 
And so I've got a short link that I gave to Cami. To yeah, throw up and on I will get it here in a minute. It's for whatever reason not going, but it is um, pretty easy. So it's um, Jason dot online forward slash audiobook. Super, uh, super audio easy. deal. Audio deal. Audio deal. Excuse me. Let me yeah. read them. Yeah. So audio, audio deal. deal. I'll put it in here. Sorry, I don't know why it's doing that. Usually you click on it and it comes across. So it's okay. Jason dot online slash audio deal. That'll get you to the audio page deal. where you can get the seventy five percent off deal on the audio book. Otherwise, yeah. you can just go to uh, jason.online slash get the book and it'll take you to Amazon where you can get whatever version of it you want. And I, I right. appreciate and I'm actually doing putting that. it here in the chat. So most yeah. of you will be able to see it now. There you here go. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that um, an audiobook having you in our ears and it goes along with a new podcast that you've also just mm -hmm. launched. So let's talk about that a little bit of the same name, Winfluence, right? Yeah, it's Winfluence, the Influencer Marketing Podcast. I started it off in September and and really just started talking to either influencers about how they've built their influence and how they work with brands, but mm -hmm. also, um, you know, brand side people on their take on how that where influencers fit into their, you know, uh, array of, of marketing weapons. Um, and then people in the influencer services industry, the software companies and, and talent managers and whatnot. Because when you look at when I have curiosity about each of those perspectives and want to dig in and ask how they do things and how they think about, you know, brands and partnerships and whatnot. And the more conversations I have, the more questions I have, but the more enlightened I feel like, and I think the audience might be uh, as well as to how they can leverage influencers and influencer marketing better. So we're at episode uh, 79 or something now. So, That's so great. but now I've been, I've been cranking out. I was two a week for a while, just interview shows. And then last month I added a Monday, like a commentary piece where I come in and talk about something in the industry that, just gets me going. So that's where I, I do my, my semi-famous rants and complaining about stuff, which people oh, well, seem to like. Right. I mean, I think it's good that you, I, 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 let's talk about that for a minute. Cause I do think that's really good model for a podcast. Cause mm -hmm. I've been thinking about revamping mine too. So um, thinking about what that would look like, but having, it's really good to have interviews because that it, it gets different voices out there. It grows your audience a little bit, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I think people come to a, a podcast to hear you. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? To hear your thoughts and your your feelings. So um, what do you think about mixing it up? How have your well, audience been? I, I mean, yeah. obviously I'm doing it. So I like the idea. I've yeah. I've always had, as, as egotistical as I can be, I've always had a weird thing about it's about me. Like I, I have to be self-promotional a little bit, but I mm -hmm. always feel awkward doing that because I don't want mm -hmm. it to be about me, which is why it's primarily an interview show. Mm -hmm. But I also recognize the fact that I have, you know, a following online mm -hmm. and people buy my books and whatnot because they want to hear what I have to say about stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm humbled and honored by that. So I started to add the commentary thing primarily because I thought my perspective on influencer marketing can kind of coalesce a lot of these things that we talk about sort of disparately on each episode. And I can kind of, you know, distill it down and say, okay, here, we've been talking about this for a couple months. Here's mm -hmm. kind of the nuts and bolts of what I've learned and how we can start to think about things this way. But in an ideal world, if I didn't have a full-time job and all sorts of other things going <laughs> on, what I'd really like to do is turn the podcast into an influencer marketing version of like, you know, Freakonomics or something where I'm interviewing a bunch of different people and I'm really building a narrative and kind of putting together a feature story. I just don't have the time to do that. I would love to do that, but it's, awesome. a, it's a time intensive activity, but yeah, yeah. That's really kind of podcast, the uh, sort of like, um, yeah, I know what you're talking about, like little, little mini shows, um, mm -hmm. like almost like you're watching TV, but um, that yeah, does I, a lot of work. I love like Freakonomics, Hidden Brain, any of those things where they say, okay, here's the topic and they drill into it and mm -hmm. they might be interviewing three or four different people. You might hear mm -hmm. multiple voices during mm -hmm. uh, the podcast to bring in the different perspective. It's kind of like an audio version of a feature story in a magazine. And I really enjoy those because I get really deep on the subject matter. I get a bunch of different perspectives, but it takes recording the interviews ahead of time. It mm -hmm. takes writing the entire show. It takes editing it all together. So it's a very time intensive process. Well, um, you can think maybe of one day I'll get there. Seasons, right. What's that? You could do it as seasons. Yeah, I could. And, uh, and, and there's some merit to that, but I, here's what the things that I don't like about seasonal podcasts is when I'm done mm -hmm. with the season, I'm like, well, I got to wait another year for more. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, crank this crap out. I want to hear well, more. Well, and maybe so, but maybe you could do like the, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm now, I'm now consulting. Okay. Got my consulting head on. Um, <laughs> what if, what if you do your current podcast the way you're doing it? Mm -hmm. And then once a year, 
you do a special version of it mm. that is a seasonal like thing where you do like this year we're going to focus on this and then you do that thing it grows your audience and then mm -hmm. they keep listening to your podcast on from there i li i like the idea and 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 i probably will do a version of that at some point my the way my brain works however is once I do a long form show like that once, mm -hmm. then I'm going to become obsessed with doing it again, only more efficiently so that I yeah. can do it faster so that I can do more of them. Sure. And so then it will become, I'll become OCD about it and I won't let it go and it'll kill me. But you know, we'll see. Well, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you, I hear you, I do, but if you are OCD it this way, like I'm going to do it once a year mm -hmm. and it's going to be my audience growing season. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you, Put, you frame it that way in your own mind. Mm -hmm. Like I'm only going to do it once a year because once a year you you have to wait for it, wait for it, wait for yeah. it. Because I mean, there's something about scarcity that makes people yeah. much more excited about coming in. You know, door. Jay Bear on his social pros podcast just shifted mm -hmm. to doing basically bingeable packets about one, mm -hmm. like a deep dive about different topics with one company. Uh, and, Ooh. um, and so basically, um, he, he, he started off, I can't remember which company it was that he started off with. It'll come to me in a minute, but he did five episodes and released them all at once. And like one was a deep dive into that company's customer care. And the next one was a deep dive into their social. And the next one was a deep dive into influencer marketing. And the next one was a deep dive into something else, but he released them in these little five packet, you know, bingeable, you know, uh, units, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, and is a good way to do it. So I might get to the point to where I I've been noodling on the idea of doing a longer form episode or a longer form version of the show. Mm -hmm. And what happens when I start noodling on something is I'll noodle on it until it bakes. And when it bakes, then I'll do it. Yeah. So it's coming. Totally. I just don't know when it's going to be fully baked. It'll so probably be after thing. a vacation want, where I can think about it. If you want to know when this happens, you need to, um, subscribe now. <laughs> Yeah. To Winfluence because you won't know when it's going to drop otherwise. So let, let's do that. Let's all subscribe to Winfluence today. Um, and that's, I think, really the thing, you know, so getting people into your world and they'll be excited to wait for this, this amazing idea that yeah. is cooking in your head. And I will tell you, Jason does cook ideas. I've seen him do it over the years and drop them. And so <laughs> you don't want to be missing the boat whenever he does this. So I would say, subscribe today. Um, and you saw that I finally made the banner work. So it does. That's awesome. There you go. Jason.online forward slash audio deal. Wait, wait a minute. Chip is saying something nice about me over here. Oh, That's here. Awesome. I have, I'm not in the comments now. What are you saying, Chip? He says, while I troll Jason for fun and he's a good sport about it, the reality is that his book is very a very valuable read. I devoured in one sitting. That's fantastic. Thank you, Chip. I appreciate it. There it story. is. That is also a testimonial right here on the show for the book <laughs> and so forth. I know that I am, I, I am I actually bought Winfluence already on Kindle, but um, I haven't gotten, it's in my reading queue. So mm -hmm. I'm going to actually buy the audiobook, and I love to listen. So I will awesome. probably get that done before I read it. But well, I like and, having books both and, ways. I like to have them in audio, listen to them. And if they're a great book, I'll often buy them. I've already bought yours, but I, I, I will often buy them mm -hmm. and then mark them up and read yep. them and, and refer do. to them. And I think that's a great way to do audio books, by the way, or books, mm -hmm. by the way, is if you like that kind of thing is listen to the audio. And then if the book is really valuable by the, by the hard copy or by the um, Kindle copy. Whichever Absolutely. It is. And that's actually one of the mm -hmm. little, the little building yeah. blocks of this book was I listened to Robert Cialdini's uh, influence, you know, his mm -hmm. 1984 or whatever it was the yeah, seminal book, book on persuasion. Mm -hmm. Um, so I read, I listened to that via audiobook and got so excited about it that I went out and bought the book to mark up and whatnot, and I actually use a lot of it as a reference in, in, in influence. So, uh, yeah, definitely a lot of fun. So one last thing before, I, I mean, we need to probably kind of wrap up because this is a short show. Um, but one thing I w did want to say, and I told people I'd say, is um, what if you want to be an influencer? What if you want to work with brands? Um, what You already said one thing you're looking for, which is people that can bring you ideas for how they would bring forward the brand. Could you kind of give some um, advice to would-be influencers or current influencers on how to grow? 
Sure. I, I mean, and I think that really is the core of it. If you want to, you know, make money being an influencer, if you want to monetize your content, what you've got to do is figure out a way to communicate to the brands out there that are leveraging influencers and brands that might want to talk to your audience. So you got to know your audience really well. But if you can figure out a way to convince the brands that you can persuade them to do something, um, and you can show them with data and maybe even with previous examples that you can do that. that you can motivate them to take action. You're going to be in pretty good shape. Um, the, the thing that most um, influencers who might fall under that label of influencer marketing, you know, the peace sign duck lips crowd. Mm -hmm. Normally, when you reach out to them, the first thing they say is, well, um, you know, or the first thing they come back to you with is here's how much I charge per post. And so right. it's all about, it's all about them. It's all about their rate. Mm -hmm. And they just take for granted that, you know, you are there, you already want to work with me. So you don't need to make a decision there. What brands are, are becoming more hip to now is the influencer who comes back with, well, here's my audience. Are you a right fit for them? And what are you trying to accomplish so that I can come back to you with some ideas on how we can accomplish that? Those are the ones who really know their audience and know their role in that cycle and think of themselves as more of a creative strategist as opposed to just someone you're at renting space from. Um, and so like a think, billboard, right? You're not, yeah. not your billboard. Just think about it more strategically. Why would a brand want to partner with you? Why would they want to communicate with your audience? If you can answer that question and then illustrate that you can be persuasive in that communication, you're going to be in really good shape. And I also want to ask you one more question about that because I, I kind of look at this. So I usually work with this, what I call the magic middle influencers with mm -hmm. a lot of my brands, mm -hmm. um, which was a Dave Sifri thing from way back in the day. But um, this idea of a, of a, like the big, huge, like millions plus influencers are, I mean, it's awesome if it can work out serendipitously and you have the budget and all that. But the question is, you know, do you also look at that? Do you look at people like, do you care so much about their following? I mean, obviously they have to have one, but mm -hmm. what do you care about the most? Yeah. I care when I'm look, when I'm choosing the influencer, I don't care about follower count really at all. I care about the quality of content and, and how well they engage their audience. Because if I've got an influencer that creates great content and does a great job of engaging their audience, yeah. if I want it in front of more eyeballs, I can put paid spin behind it. I don't, I'm not worried about the size of the audience. I'm worried about the quality of the content and the quality of the engagement. If that influencer a creates great content and B is persuasive in talking to their audience about the brands they work with, then they're gold. And I will use them over and over and over again. And if I need it to be in front of 2 million people, as opposed to 2000 people, I can put paid spin behind it and get it in front of a targeted audience that way. Okay. Brands. I want you to take, if you're here still, this, what he just said is absolute gold. Um, so many brands don't do that. So many brands do not use the content ever again that is made for them by mm. influencers. They put it out there and they say, well, I'm just trying to reach that audience. And they don't see it as exactly what you just said as a package of content that you can amplify, amplify mm -hmm. really. And then guess what? It's a win-win. You're amplifying that influencer. They're going to love you for that, A. And they're going to continue to be like hugely big, huge fans of you. Um, if you can treat them that way, instead of like, they put it out there, they work hard on it. Nobody ever talks to them again. <laughs> nobody ever says anything to them again. Um, I talk to influencers every day that are so frustrated by this. So um, just, yeah, thank you so much, Jason. That is like gold at the end of the episode. So thanks a bunch. Glad to provide it. Okay, guys. So you have two actions out of this. Number one, get the book. Okay, so wherever you like to do it, we gave you a way to get it audio. We gave you, you can go on Amazon, get it there. You can get it a bunch of places, WinFluence. Okay, you want to do that. And I even have like, I think I even have, yes, I do. It looks like oh, that. You are so good, but you will, you will, I, I get little brownie points here too, because guess what? I have. It, oh, it look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Bad to stream. Um, there it is. That's nice. what it looks like. Nice, nice uh, book cover, by the way, too. I love Thanks. this book cover. Yeah, that's uh, the guy. At, uh, I think his name's Andrew at uh, Entrepreneur Press did that, and uh, I loved it. Oh my gosh, I love it too. I um, mean, it's it's simple, and it's not, and it just really catches your attention. So definitely go get the book. Listen to the podcast of the same name. Subscribe to the podcast, and then you know, let us know what you think. Like, if you have questions about if you want to be an influencer, if you are an influencer, you have more questions. I'm sure Jason is open for that. Um, so my, um, let us know what you want. And if you're a brand that's like, how can I use this model? Definitely get in touch. 
And um, I'm sure, you know, on both sides, we would be happy to talk to you. So thank you so, so much. So, so much. I love, um, you know, having the moments with you and you're such a great guy and a good friend. So thank you so much for being here today, Jason. And uh, we'll guys, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks.